Hey everybody, Rose Matter here. Welcome to part 60 of my Umin Echo Let's Play. Today I am going to be tackling the highly anticipated tea party. People have said that this is one of, if not the best tea parties. And considering how amazing the tea party for the last chapter was, I have high hopes for this, especially the way that the last episode ended. And the way this chapter ended, which was, it seemed like all hope was lost. Beatrice, the other witches, and Badler were basically, their pieces were taken off the game board. Uh, Erica and Burncastle seemed to have won the game. Poor Natsui just had her reputation dragged through the mud. Uh, it just seemed like she had lost everything. And it was uh, really hard to watch. Uh, this whole chapter felt like I was just shitting on Natsui. Uh, but at the very end, of course, we had Badler saying that it was no good at all. So I think he's coming back. Badler's not going to go down without a fight. So I'm very excited. Let's get into this tea party and let's see what happens. All right, so we're back at the Court of Illusions here. Erika, Doranor. Hi, I want Badler to somehow smash through here like Angie did at the end of the chapter and be like, "It's not over." Oyobi desu ka? Anata tachi wa hikizuki kono kakera ni todomari. Oh, okay, so we're gonna get... Except... Is it going to be a true, accurate thing based on what Erica said last time with Natsui that... Pretty sure isn't true all the stuff that you're saying about, like, her having sexual relations with uh, Kinzo and everything. Can we really trust her interpretation of the other games? And we still have the whole matter of that red truth that Vergalia gave, which is that Natsu is not the culprit, but Erika said that she is the culprit, so we've got conflicting truths here. <laughs> Burnkestel wore a massive and horrible smile, which Erika shared. Beatrice's witch illusions would disappear, and the result of all the previous games would be painted over. It had been crushed in every way possible, and only the naked truth remained. To Erica, such a weak truth might as well have been fish on a chopping board. Okay, so she's pinning it on Natsui for every other game. Uh-huh. ベアトの魔女伝説は人かけらも残してはダメよ。使用人たちの間の噂。不可解な出来事を層であるかのように語る空気。金蔵の幻想と連動した魔女幻想。全て完全に処分しなさい。無論です。直ちに着手いたします。
ソロモン王に連なる千年の魔女に仕える家具とか威張っておきながら飛んだまがいものじゃない何者なの報告によればオカルトマニアの富豪たちにイミテーションを売りつけて高額詐欺を働く集団があるとか騙された富豪が同様に曰く月を語って転売するためマリア間で偽られ神格化された可能性があるとのことです裏付けと詳細特定を急がせていますそれで言うと、キンゾーは買われていたのは、彼は彼の家族のアメリカンその界隈では、yep. 後ろ宮金蔵はどんなパチモノにも大金を払う。I mean, I <笑><笑>それが煉獄の七姉妹の正体おかしいわ<笑><笑>ベアトの魔女幻想らしいとんだまがいものだわ七つの大罪を語る文在でイミテーションの土産物風情だったわけですまあ私も初めて見た時からいかがわしい土産物屋で売ってる文鎮に過ぎないとは思ってたわけですが<笑>文鎮<笑><笑>その真実はもう七姉妹には突きつけたいいえまだですあいつらまだ自分たちは千年以上前に。偉大なる魔術師によって生み出されたとか本気で信じてやがります早く完璧な証拠と真実を突きつけ自分たちが原価30ドルにも満たない文人風情であることを思い知らせてやりたいですその時どんな顔を見せて絶望するのかしら<笑>楽しみだわその際には私を呼びなさい最高の紅茶と梅干しを持って鑑賞に来るわベイトーズ・ウィッチ・アルーションズ・アルーディ・ビン・シーン・トゥー・アンド・ビン・プロヴィン・ナッエヴィン・ワン・オブ・ダム・ワン・シンプリー・ザ・ルゾルト・ア・ヒュン・ファンタシー・ワン・キンド・ファンタシー・クリエイティブ・アン・ワン・ワン・ザ・ベーシス・ア・アルーションズ・ウィッチ・アンド・ウィッチ・アンド・ウィッチ・アンド・ウィッチ・アンド・ウィッチ・アンド・ウィッチ・アンド・ウィッチ・アンド・ウィッチ・アンド・ウィッチ・アンド・ウィッチ・アンド・ウィッチ・ This was called execution. 処刑は見せ物ではありません。原則非公開です。元老院議員であらせられる大ベルンカステル教による大本院が職務を適正に執行しているかの視察です。異端審問官風情が拒否する気ですかええ、そうよ。ドラノールたちが職務を正規の手順で遂行するかどうか私は元老院を代表して視察するだけよ。Oh yes, with your black tea and your dried plums while laughing maniacally. Yeah, you're just a, a, an observer, not taking no pleasure at all from this. <笑>ワルギリア、ロノウェ、ガープたちも現在、高速へ向けて準備中です。シエスタ姉妹子の得体が捜索に当たっています。無論その後にベアトリーチェに関わった三人についても拘束処刑しますドラノールシエスタ姉妹の正体は高い確率で犯行に用いた凶器がより白ではないかと推定されますガートルード上級補佐官が専従チームを結成全件を調査中ですシエスタ姉妹の所定も楽しみです一人ずつまとめて一度にジャバの缶を中身全部ポットに入れるバカはいないわ一さじずつゆっくり味わわなくちゃ<笑><笑>まったくです所定は連日行いましょう家具たちに魔女たちに一人ずつ連日の所定書を必ずやお届けします素敵じゃない何しろ随分の人数がいるからね2週間くらいはたっぷり楽しめそうじゃない誰から処刑するかその順序を彼らに決めさせるとか
処刑概念についても最高の提案をするように古今東西のあらゆる処刑を毎日楽しみたいわ処刑は大法院規定の方法でと規則がありますお任せを我が主必ずや魅力的な処刑賞を準備いたします最低でも四つ崎刑くらいにはなさいよ無論ですヨーロッパ各国からアジア各国まで東西のあらゆる王国が採用した国王への反逆罪にのみ適用される各国最高の処刑を列挙してご覧に入れます私からも処刑方法を提案したいわそれに悩むことは寝苦しい夜の最高の清涼剤だから<笑>アイデアを練って今度手紙で送るわ。Man, I'm just thinking back to when Vern Kessel was working with Angie, and she seemed like maybe not someone to be trusted, but did not quite this malicious, and then just seeing her true self come out. ベアトリーチェの処刑にて我が主の望まれる最高の処刑をありがとうエリカあなたのおかげで私は病の辛さを当分の間忘れることができそうだわ Oh an illness did she bring that up at any point? <laughs> Or is, does she not actually have an illness? She's a mysterious one あなたは最高だわ私の駒、私の分身、そして私の可愛い娘。も、もったいないお言葉です。若アルチ。エリカ、あなたに栄誉と褒美を与えるわ。ベアとの最大の象徴であるあの大広間の肖像が、あれを外して叩き割り。その薪にてケーキを焼いて食べなさいそして残った額縁にあなたの肖像画を掲げることを許すわあ、oh, just like Ava t e r i c h e ありがとうございます最高の栄誉ですベアトリーチェの名前と痕跡のすべての抹殺、抹消。I'm just waiting for Badler to somehow like take that long sword out of his body and come in stomping be like, You are not going to remove ベアトリーチェ from the world. I will not let you. それがすべて終わるまでの間、あなたにこの閉じられた六軒島の主となることを命じるわ。奇跡の魔女、ベルンカステルの名において、その日まで。あなたに魔女の位を与えることを宣言するわこれよりあなたは真実の魔女エリカを名乗りなさいし真実の魔女<笑>ありがとうございます我が主この栄誉に恥じぬ一層の働きを誓います Even though she was nothing more than a piece, she was being granted the honor of calling herself a witch like her master, if only for a brief stretch of time. Erica was so moved at having her hard work acknowledged in this greatest form that she trembled. Dora Nolu was, Hiki Tsuki Erika o Hosa Shi, so no shin chok o Watashi ni h o k o k s h i n a s a Kyoi des. Tokoro de, Lambda wa doko? A chira ni ora demas. From the guest seating on the second floor, she pointed downwards. Lambda Delta could be seen beneath Badler, who hung there dead, run through by the red longsword. He's not dead, he's coming back. Come on, Badler, come on. Ushiromiya Batora ka. Omosiroi otoko datta wa. So ste motto omosiroku nareta ka mosire nai no ni. Zonnen ne. Migoto na shinizama ja nai. エリカこのバトラの亡きは屋敷の大広間に飾るといいわ
次に私がこのかけらに訪れる時は私をその前で迎えなさいかしこまりました我が主愚かなる男の姿を永遠に主の勝利の記念碑といたします<笑>それは素敵ねしゃれてるわしっくいで塗り固めて美しい純白の石像にするといい可愛らしくデコなんかもしてくれちゃったら最高ねはいラムダデルタ卿ご期待に添えるよう努力しますおめでとう魔女就任一時的なものであれ私はあなたを友人として迎えるわエリカは so overcome with emotion that tears came to her eyes because no greater pleasure exists for a piece than having its efforts acknowledged by its master 最後にはベアとも剥製にしてやりたいわそして大広間に高々と飾ってやるの白樺ご飯人間狩りの伯爵よ The human hunting count. All right, let's check this out. All right, Lake and Count. Lake Shiraba,、uh, Shirakaba is a reference to On Markari no Kizu, an award winning 2003 novel by Kyo Goku Natsuhiko. Human hunting count is a reference to Galaxy Express 999. Okay, nothing that I know. 私、魔女じゃなかった頃にあれを読んで、永遠の命を得た人間って、どうしてここまで残忍になれるんだろうって、不思議に思ったことがあるわ。あの時の私は、正直共感できなかった。魔女になって千年を生きてよくわかるわ。あれの筆者は、本当の意味で、私たちの残酷さをよく理解していたのよ<笑><笑>次はどこへ行くどうせ旅立ちはお互い背中を向けてでしょあなたに退屈をしたくないからよありがとうベルンでも私はきっと100を数えたらまたあなたを探し始めるわよ退屈させない子ねだから好きよ愛してるわまたどこかで会いましょうもっとも100年先か1000年先か未来永劫再会しないかもわからないけれど大丈夫よ愛し合う2人にかけらの海は狭いわ第三の男天井さじきだってばあの星空のように輝く無数のかけらを一つ砕くたびに一晩は退屈の毒から解放されると分かったらお前だって星の数を数えてみたくなるうまいうまい<笑> The witches known as voyagers travel across the countless glittering futures of possibility and gobble them up trying to escape their illness called boredom for as long as they can The tiny, tiny fragment created by the human known as Bea Terice had now been gobbled up by the two witches and had lost its glitter. Okay, the human known as Bea Terice. The two who had earlier called themselves rivals in front of Beto now stopped that charade and laughed together playfully. Erika, Atarashki Kono Kakira no Shihai Shi, Anata no Shinjits o Tsumugi, Kono Sekai no Shuen Made no Monogatari o Egakina Sai. えっと、次は第6のゲームだっけはい、第6のゲームです。エピソード6は、なんてタイトルにするか。<笑>エピソード6、あなたが決めなさい。エリカは、The Witch of Truth、and also the best detective、and also the best at everything。もはや、この物語の紡ぎ手であり、マスターであるのは、あなたなのだから。ありがとうございます。実は、もう決めてあります。あら、もうなのなら聞かせてちょうだい。なんてタイトルなのはい、エピソード6。<笑>本当はじらしたいんですが、お教えします。<笑>何よ、もったいぶらずに教えなさいよ。新米魔女のくせに、先輩じらすとかってありえないわ。
エピソード6チェックメイトオブザゴールデンウィッチ<笑> Wait no that's not it that's that's not the tea party that's not it come on now <laughs> wait no there's more to this right <laughs> Alright, well, that ended quite abruptly, but I imagine this is where we're really gonna get, like, if people told me this is a long tea party, uh, so this is where we're probably gonna get to the meat of it, so. The tea party of the unhuman. Okay, let's go. In the cathedral devoid of people, a figure could be seen staring up at the heavens, its chest pierced with a long red sword which pinned it in place to the ground, and it was the figure of Badler. Ironically, it looked just like what he had done to Beato with blue wedges in the fourth game. Badler had died quite some time ago. No, in this place, the concept of death means nothing except that one has stopped thinking. Therefore, in a sense, Badler was not dead. After being defeated in a fight over the truth, he no longer had the strength to think of a way to resist. And so, he was dead. Dalinor's massive longsword, which had been left in place of a tombstone, fastened Badler to the spot even after his death. This was being lit by a faint light seeping out of a high, high skylight. Quiet footsteps rang out across the stealth cathedral. Oh! She, she, will she speak? From the darkness behind a pillar, a woman slowly stepped forwards. It was Beatrice. Her eyes had no light in them, and looked the same way they had for so long in the Golden Land, still muddied over with grey. Previously, she couldn't even drink black tea properly without assistance. But now, though it was slow, and though there was no life in her eyes, she was, surprisingly, walking. And with slow, deliberate steps, she reached Badler, who was still dead and pierced. Then, slowly, she touched him. She tugged on his sleeve. However, Badler showed no reaction. When she realized it wasn't sleep, but death, the witch with the forlorn gaze drooped her head even lower. Then she quietly whispered, Uso. Beato softly touched Badler. Then she pressed her forehead against Badler's chest. Oh boy, this is sad. There was no longer any heartbeat. It wasn't just because he had surrendered. It was because the witches had banished him from the game board. So now, Badler would never return. Now, my boy's coming back. He's gotta... The rest of this game would not be the same without him. This whole game is really between him and her. So now, the Golden Witch, Beatrice, has no more reason to exist. This seems like this is the end. This is not the end. This would be the, the quickest post-game stuff ever. Man, what a troll that would be is if all the rest of the games were just run by the other witches, by uh, Burn Castell and, and Erica and Lambda Delta. Then the Golden Witch, her task completed, scattered as a spray of- oh, sorry, skipped too fast. I'm just so anxious to see what happens here. They're at the heart of the game. They can't be gone. In the Golden Land, the gray rain gently continued to fall. There was a faint aroma of good black tea. Beato stared blankly at the surface of the tea. There was Regalia continuing her knitting, along with me and Delinor talking to each other. 
This is a flashback. A flashback to a memory of Badler's, which Delinor's sword must have given him as it pierced him. A flashback of that time Delinor had come to visit the tea party in the Golden Land. Delinor, I thought she was a ruthless killer doll without a heart, but maybe she actually is pretty approachable. Though, of course, neither of us will show any mercy when fighting on the game board. For a while, we gazed at the rain-drenched rose garden as we quietly enjoyed our tea. <sighs> Alright, so we got the Ten Commandments actually written down here. Alright guys, I'm going to be rattling some stuff off here. The Ten Commandments created by Delanor A. Knox's father and used in hearsay trials. The first is forbidden for the culprit to be anyone not mentioned in the early part of the story. It is forbidden for supernatural agencies to be employed as a detective technique. It is forbidden for hidden passages to exist. It is forbidden for unknown drugs or obscure scientific devices to be used. Oh, Knox's fifth not included. Oh, it kind of makes you want to look up the fifth, but that might be a spoiler. It is forbidden for accident or unaccountable intuition to be employed as a detective technique. It is forbidden for the detective to be the culprit. It is forbidden for the case to be resolved with clues that are not presented. Observers are permitted to put forward their own conclusions and interpretations. It is forbidden for a character to disguise themselves as another without any clues. So that's probably a thing right there. The game is telling me that all the information has been here. Maybe not from the beginning of the game, but all the information has been given uh, so far in the story that should let me be able to solve it. I just have to interpret what's been shown. But the one that got that caught me was the fifth one. It's not shown. はい。我が父が考案した戒律です。隠し扉は存在してはならない。ノックス第三条だっけか。だから探偵は隠し扉を探す必要さえないわけだ。なかなかな暴論だね。Burncastle talked about this. She said even searching for hidden doors was a waste of time because they're forbidden by Knox's third commandment. It makes me want to argue back and say, it isn't so uncommon for a rich family's mansion to have a hidden door or two built into it. But apparently you can get away with that kind of rule in the mystery genre. As an aside, there exist many wonderful mysteries in which hidden doors appear, and where hidden doors are the theme. And though, of course, this is limited to novels which have the premise that hidden doors exist. Without that premise, hidden doors mustn't exist. So if that premise isn't there, then there's no need to search for hidden doors. I think that's probably the essence of her ridiculous argument. I get the feeling that the detective trying to expose the truth and the illusion trying to mask it with fiction are getting blended together leading to a bizarre form of argument similar to a devil's proof. Making a locked room murder seemed to be accomplished by a witch with magic. That's fantasy. Exposing that it was a human's crime done with tricks. That's anti-fantasy. Investigating all possibilities to expose what those tricks are. That's mystery. So that's where before where Badler was completely shooting down anything to do with witches at all, but now he's gonna growing up and saying you have to explore all possible options before you come to the truth. But claiming the possibilities with no hints supporting them are unworthy of investigation. That's also mystery? Hidden doors, by definition, are hidden in a way that there can't be any clues. Would claiming that hidden doors therefore necessarily exist, even if the detective can't find them, be anti-mystery? That's enough of that. This argument is far too of a, far too of a, dig a digression from the riddles I'm actually supposed to be solving. My fight is very simple. I'm only fighting to explain that it was possible for a human to carry out these crimes, which were supposedly carried out by a witch. This whole discussion about mystery and anti doesn't serve any purpose, so I can't bring myself to have any particular interest in the rules known as the Knox decatalog. Uh, 
Decalog? Decalog? Probably saying that wrong. ノクスは起きないですか逃げてたな。隠し扉の存在を調べもせずに全否定可能なんて。何悪魔の証明並みにうさんくせえな。ファンタジーの対局のはずなのに。なぜか同じ論法になっちまってる気がするぜ。あ、しろくさ。言い過ぎた。お前の親父が作ったんだもんな。お気になさらずに戯れに過ぎないとおっしゃる方もいらっしゃいますので。バトラ君には実会はかなり傲慢なものに感じられるのでしょう。正直なところ
それに対し情報を与えると今度はその情報の真偽を疑う根拠否定便利よな無能を棚上げする実に小気味よい言葉よ Then she said she'd give me reliable information that couldn't be denied, and created the rule called the Red Truth, like the Red Truth that Natsui is not the culprit that Badler never threw out there. But he, oh, wait, maybe he did. But then they said that the Red Truth can only be used by witches. Only after Beito had done all that for me did the curtain finally rise on my battle with her. ベアトリーチェ不思議な方です謎こそが魔女の住まう狭間なのに自らその謎を暴くことのできる赤き真実をあなたに与え始めたのですね It's because all of this has to do with the human Whoever the human ベアトリーチェ is She wants the mystery to be solved Because Badler has something to do with this It's all going back to that sin that he, he did to her. That's the catalyst for all of this. It has to be. So he, he, she wants him to find out the truth. You could say the red truth is a hint Beto gives me, so I'll agree to compete in this war of reasoning. It's a carrot. Being given a hint is like she's saying, go on, try solving it. It is possible. An enigma, which is guaranteed to be solvable, can't be called a true enigma. これではまるでベアと自身が自分は本当は魔女じゃないって自分で認めてるようなものじゃないかおやおや確かにそうなりますね本当におかしな子ですベアと gave no answer with grey eyes she did nothing but blankly gaze at the steam rising from her black tea 我が父は思考する力に杖を与えるために実戒を生み出したのです決して物事を傲慢に決めつけるためではありません思考する力に杖そうですノックス第8条提示されない手がかりでの解決を禁ずこれは手がかりなしに当て随量で推理をしてはいけないという意味だけではありません逆に言えば出題者は解決のための手がかりを必ず提示しなければならないということですつまり実戒に従うなら全ての謎には必ずヒントがありよって必ず解決は可能だと保証されてることになるわけか。I see. So, this is what she means by a crutch for the power of thinking. If you can believe that it's solvable, you start feeling the desire to have a go at those riddles. If you're capable of believing that hints do exist, you get fired up about rereading the story to search for them. The story is like, it feels like it's talking to me directly, like to go back and reread, which I do not have time to do that, but I do still plan on doing what I mentioned, I think, in the last tea party, which is that, or、uh, one episode anyway, I said that I wanted to go back. Once this story is over, once I have the answers, to go back and kind of like see how they foreshadowed it and how they laid those, you know, the,、uh, the hints down that I didn't get the first time. <laughs> スポーツにもそういうのあるよな必ず自分は成し遂げられるという強いイメージがあるのとないのでは記録に大きく差が出るというし It's so sweet that he's still calling her mom despite knowing that 
assume is not actually his mom. In that case, the Knox Decalogue. Decalogue? Ugh. <laughs> Isn't really a set of arrogant and strict restrictions. You can also see it as a way to encourage readers who are trying to solve the mystery by telling them to give it their all, since it's definitely solvable. しかし世の中の推理小説There's no end of arguments like this in the mystery world. Is this or that famous detective novel a fair mystery? In other words, one that follows Knox's Ten Commandments? That sort of argument is already an eternal theme of the mystery world. In fact, in mystery discussions, arguments like these sometimes become more heated than talk about the actual solutions. <laughs> That's right. When fighting with the Decalogue, there's just one thing you want guaranteed from the beginning, and that is the guarantee that the detective novel will adhere to the Decalogue. If a work labels itself as an orthodox mystery, then you have nothing to worry about. However, the mystery genre contains many unorthodox subgenres within it. Does that mean that trying to use reasoning in an unorthodox detective novel is a complete waste of time? うん、それはそれで傲慢な気もするな。はい。私も父の実家をそのような傲慢の武器にされるのは非常に悲しいことです。お前は実家を武器に。さっきベアトと戦ったわけだが。それはつまりこのベアトのゲームの世界が when I asked that, there was a strange silence. Virgilia, Delanor, and of course Beato all remained silent for a while, almost as though my question had touched at the core of something. <laughs> この子の作ったゲームです。あなたと勝敗を決めるためのゲーム。この子はそれをミステリーとファンタジーの対決のように呼んでいました。しかし残念ながら本格推理とは一言も言っていません。すなわち実家に乗っ取っているという保証はないということ
レアとはあなたに解いてほしいと願って解けるようにこのゲームをこの物語の謎を生み出しましたそれだけは私が赤き真実で保証しますアーゲリアは「ゲームを解くことができないのでゲームを解くことができないので」It was the one guarantee that all those who try to use reasoning desire. So, no, what I got, what got to know, Jika, and not to be me to be get a set of monocava, Vakarima said. Scashi, Badoraga, Nayami, Kurashimi, Sweet in a shishin, or Motomero Tokini, Moshimo, or Moidashta Nara, Waga Jikaimo, Tameshte, Mite Kurasai. Futabi Domo Yukito, Yotosurto. 何か新しい発見を与えてくれるかもしれませんありがとうよ心底行き詰まったらお前の戦い方も参考にしてみるぜいいのかよ敵に塩を送っちまってお気になされずに手土産も持たずに訪れた茶会です茶家の代わりとなったなら幸いですそれに私と再び相まみえたならそんな悠長なことを言っている暇はおそらくないでしょうからレアと俺に解いてほしいと願って解けるようにこのゲームの謎を生み出した In other words, Beato thinks I can solve it. Isn't that proof that it's possible to apply logic to this? Of course, that's from Beato's point of view. And it doesn't necessarily mean that it will be possible for me to work it out. But compared to before now, when I didn't even know whether applying reasoning was possible or impossible, that one sentence might give me a great deal of courage and strength. And at least it has the power to silence any negative thoughts about it just being useless anyway. Suidi dekiru to saki ni aite ni shoumei sase na kute wa Suidi o shinai. まるで奥手な若者の恋愛のようですね恋愛ええ自分のことを愛してくれると相手が先に証明しない限り自分も相手を愛したくないでしょ Both boys and girls want to hear someone say I love you to them first without being prompted That's the dream They don't want to love another person until they're sure that person will love them back After all There's nothing as painful as a one sided love, and the emotional scars of a love that doesn't work out. This feels. This feels like this is a big hint. A big hint. I have been saying that I feel like this sin has something to do with Shannon. And this is、uh, making me think that I might be on the right path. A one sided love, the emotional scars. Will last a long time and maybe make somebody do something crazy like kill a bunch of people? Because they're afraid of that pain. More than anything else, they want assurance that the other person will love them back. Narodo. Sweetly, s h o w says, New Kerr, Saka to Doksha no Kanke, O Moshirok, Hyogen Stemas. Yes, maybe you could liken detective novels to that. Both the writer and the reader first want the other party to tell them, I will solve it, or it can be solved. Until the writer is assured that readers will definitely attempt to solve their story, they don't want to write it. The same goes for the readers. Oh, maybe I'm, uh, <laughs> okay, maybe I was just off base there. Maybe that wasn't as black and white as I thought about the whole love thing. It's an interesting way of thinking about it, though, about it's true about the mystery. It's like you don't want to go into something that's not solvable or that doesn't give you the,、uh, the, the hints ahead of time. It's like seeing、um, like a thriller movie, too. It's the worst thing ever when they just pull something out of their ass at the last second to just be like a shocking moment, but they don't give you any clues beforehand. They just pull it out of their butt to like, be a twist ending, you know? Until they're sure they will definitely be able to solve the, solve the story if they try, they don't want to read it. Because they don't want to write what they consider a masterpiece and be hurt when no one reads it. Because they don't want to apply logic to what they consider a masterpiece and be hurt when they realize it was all useless. So, the reason is that 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 the But they're bringing back this love thing about young kids. 
もじもじしたまま何の進展もなくひと夏が終われいやいや他の男とくっついちまうことだってあるぜ俺の初恋もそんな感じだったさ<笑> Oh, Bathers first love Was it not Shannon? Because saying they all hook up with a different person Along with these one-sided feelings they can't express They lament the passage of a summer which will never come again And the days of their youth end The writer who wouldn't write until he gained the support of readers goes for all eternity without re、uh, releasing his maiden work. The reader who waited for the writer's rise to fame go their whole life without knowing the joy of the mystery genre. Batrak, so no, Tamago ga saki ka, Niwatori ga saki ka, to you octena len ai wa, do no dan kai ni made sussunda ra, so si so ai no kankei ni naru no desu ka? Sore wa, sumi kasane daro na. Maybe this also goes back to the whole thing without love, it cannot be found. It's like the whole thing about the love between the reader and the writer, where it's like if you, you have to love the story and be invested in the story to want to find the truth and solve it, right? The truth cannot be found without love. まあ、多分、自然と恋人関係に進めるんじゃないかと。唐突な告白で始まった関係は、割と別れることも多いが。実は互いに告白したことがなく、気づいたらずっと一緒にいたって連中の方が、案外、付き合いは長いってのが、俺の今日までの印象だ。つまり、互いが相手を信じる、信頼関係が生まれたら、ということですね。うん。かもな。いいかいだぜ。ミステリーってのは、作家と読者のバトルだと思ってたんだが、実はそうじゃないのか。ええ。互いが信頼し合った上でしか成立しない。愛ある関係なのですよ。Like Badler and Beatrice, where she trusts him to solve the mystery? Is that what he's realizing too? じゃあこいつと俺の関係も殺し合いじゃなくて愛ある関係だっていうのかよ<笑>意地悪をし合う小学生同士の関係程度にしか見えませんがね<笑> Regalia choked at us in a middle-aged woman sort of way Still, though I'm not expecting friendship or a trusting relationship, I can accept her as a rival. Beato is fighting at full force, trying to make me acknowledge that she's a witch. And I'm responding to that and going all out, trying to, to deny that witches exist. Miss Beato が正面から全力であなたにぶつかっているとどうしてあなたは言い切れるのですか見てりゃわかるだ。あなたに全力で正面からぶつかっていると彼女が赤き真実で宣言したわけではありませんなのにあなたはそれを疑わないわけですか赤き真実以外は何も信じないとおっしゃったあなたがです Maybe he just trusts that she is fighting at full force <笑>バトラ君の言うところのコミュニケーションが増え互いの関係が疑えなくなった段階 Regalia and Delinor giggle together. One guy, multiple women. The topic is love. Wait a sec, isn't this the worst formation for getting made fun of? I tried a couple of times to change the subject and clumsily brought up to more refined topics in an attempt to return the mood to something more suitable for a tea party in the rainy Golden Land. But each time, Regalia saw right through me and laughed at me. Even amidst this, Beato kept looking downwards with those gray eyes, staring into her black tea. Yeah, that's right. Regalia and Delinor gave me so many hints back then, and yet I barely thought about them at all. It's way too late now, but let me think. <laughs> I mean, 
I guess it did say he's he's uh he's not dead, but he's pretty much stopped thinking. But if he's able to think, being pierced by that longsword is going to give him a lot of time to think about this. Now that it's too late to change anything, and I have an endless amount of time on my hands, let me think. One more time, let me think about the red truth Bergelia gave me, and the crutch called the Decalogue that Delinor lent me. With the red truth, Regalia guaranteed that at the very least, Beato left enough room in this tale for me to achieve victory. That red truth guarantee will give me the power to start my heart beating once again. Oh, I want him to just be able to pull that sword out of his chest and then Delinor being like, All right, nice. You're back. We can have another wits battle. And there's the crutch of the Decalogue, which Delinor lent me. Even she began by warning me that the Decalogue isn't so almighty that it can solve all riddles. But even so, she kind of described it as a method to solve. No, to take on riddles. Let me try it. Even though there's no guarantee whether this tale is mystery or fantasy, let me believe I'll definitely be able to solve it. That it is a solvable tale. A mystery. And let me make one last attempt. When I came to, I was suddenly in that strange tea room, where I'd often argued furiously with Beato across a table. Of course, Beato was nowhere to be found. It was just me, isolated and alone. That's alright. Even so, I won't stop thinking. Okay then, what were Nox's commitments again? I'm sure Delinor explained most of them while slamming me with them, but the fifth one! Let's try and figure out the fifth one. Of course, even I recall them vaguely. What was the first one again? When I muttered about what the first one was, Delinor's subordinate appeared, as if to answer my question. Without bothering with an unnecessary hello, she told me nothing more or less than what I wanted to know. Does that mean that by the end of the first game, the culprit must have appeared already? True, that is the most basic of basics in the mystery genre. A given. A given? Have I really kept that as a basic assumption? With each new game, the number of people in this tale keeps increasing. That violates the close circle rule. From that moment onwards, everything is screwed up. Did I give up on the inside, thinking the true culprit or mastermind must not have shown up yet, and that reasoning was therefore useless? If I'd read this tale as a fantasy, new characters keep showing up to the point where even having demon kings or gods or divine creatures appear wouldn't be strange at all. Even if the true mastermind first appeared in one of the last episodes, I would just accept it as that kind of story. However, if I read it as a mystery and stick with that conviction, then there's no need to worry at all about anyone who shows up later, because Nox's first clearly rules them out, stating it's impossible for the culprit to be anyone who appears later in the story. Of course, there's also what both Delinor and Virgilia said. There's no guarantee that this tale follows the rules of the Decalogue, so of course I can't deny the possibility that the culprit first appeared in the second game or later. However, this is one way of thinking. This time, I'll forget about the Devil's Proof completely and try to borrow the power of the Decalogue in my thinking. It's like he's got a new thing in his arsenal. After all I know by now, I'll never be able to reach the truth without looking from multiple perspectives. Even the first of Nox's commandments denies the existence of an unknown person known as the witch from the very start. If I'd followed that in the truest sense, I might not have suffered so miserably in the second game. Nox no. Delinor's other subordinate appeared without a sound and gave me an answer to my question. That's right. A detective can't go around using magic. So, 
犯人もまた魔法を使ってはならないということだよな慎んで申し上げる解釈は自由と知りたまえ Course, I'm not going to give you any concrete answers, right? <laughs> yeah, he probably said the same thing. <laughs> If this game is a fair battle between me and Beato, then because this tale is solvable, it features no elements which are impossible to explain with logic. Implying that no magic is actually used, right? Because if he can't use magic, then she shouldn't be able to use magic. Yeah, in other words, magic cannot, must not exist. When it does appear, I shouldn't suspect the mystery element is breaking down, but I should instead question why it was shown and suspect the witnesses and observers. Ah, we're getting into this. It's like, why. What does it mean when we see things that look like magic? Is that interpretations, the stories that the witnesses are giving? That's right. That was Beato's greatest weapon in the second game depictions of magic that have no place in a mystery. By showing me that, she forced me to think that this tale wasn't a mystery, and therefore that reasoning was impossible, and I surrendered. However, if I had believed unshakably that this was a mystery, it would have been completely obvious to doubt the witnesses who claimed to have seen those things. Also, ah, at the end of the first game, it was revealed this tale had been passed on to people in the future by means of a message bottle. And we know that there's multiple different stories, right? Someone wrote down the incident in the form of a story. In other words, this entire story is a world which includes the personal opinions of an observer, namely, the person who wrote that message in a bottle. In other words, the, the observer isn't God, it's a human. Therefore, there's no guarantee that the descriptions are truly impartial. By the end of the first game, it had already been made clear the text violated a constant premise of mystery stories. That they must be told from a god's eye view. For that reason, it's possible to doubt not just the witnesses, but the observer as well. Right? Unreliable witnesses and unreliable observers. If I could have doubted this much, then no matter how many seemingly unsolvable displays of magic appeared, I wouldn't have had to blindly accept them, give up. However, that raises the question. Is it even possible to solve a story written by an observer who isn't impartial? All reasoning ends here if you get obsessed with this. That's why it's so important for me to believe that Beato is trying to fight me through this tale. Because it's a fight, that means I've been given a chance of winning. And the fact I've been given that must mean that reasoning is possible. This part is the hardest. Unless I believe the cruel witch took on the risk of losing to try and have a fair fight with me, I can't get past this part. For Gilly is right, it's just like love. If I can't believe that Beto is fighting me head on with everything she's got, I won't be able to reason any further than this. Alright, I'll admit it. Unless I admit we're in love, I won't be able to get any further. When Virgilia ran out of patience with the two of us, shy and incapable as we were of admitting that out loud, she gave me that red truth instead. That was the red truth saying, Beato wanted me to solve the riddles of this game, so she created them to be solvable. What the hell is that? It's like Sato-san in class A says he likes you. Like hearing a love confession via a friend. I really am pitiful. Reasoning is love. If we don't love each other, the logic won't open up. In that case, why can't we just say we love each other? If you think you can solve it, just you try. You're incompetent. Like hell, you can solve it. According to George Aniki, you call that sort of thing Sundora. That brutal witch is finally starting to look a bit cute. If I meet her again, I want to try saying, You're such a Sundora. If I meet her again, somewhere. He better say that. That. They will see each other again, right? He better say that line. Noxus第8条 
ノックス第6条探偵方法に偶然と第六巻の使用を禁ず It must not be solved with clues that aren't presented and it must not be solved by luck If this tale is made to be solvable, then we can read this the opposite way. In other words, clues must have been prepared so that the tale can be solved. And it has to have been made in a way that it can be solved without relying on luck. If I can believe strongly that Beto is challenging me to a fair game where reasoning is possible, I can be sure of that. That must mean that Beto has already concealed clues, hints, and messages within the tale so far. It isn't from the Decalogue, but Erica or someone said this. There are three riddles to be exposed in a, in a mystery. One is the who done it. Who is the culprit? One is the how done it. How did they commit the crime? One is the why done it. Why did they commit the crime? All of this means that clues related to these three riddles are already present inside this tale. No, strictly speaking, it's like this. Beto scattered hints about because she wanted me to solve those three riddles. Though whether I'm capable of catching those hints or not is another matter. Even if you pose a riddle thinking it's easy, it might be difficult for the person trying to solve it. Therefore, it's only natural for there to be a difference in how difficult each person thinks it is. That's why, as Beto went through each successive game, she watched me closely and tweaked the game as needed to get a good arrangement. When Beato realized I'd completely surrendered in the second game because it was too hard, she secretly worried. If I surrendered and lost the will to fight, the game would no longer remain on an even footing. Therefore, in order to make me regain my will to fight, from the third game onwards, she set things up in a way that made it easier for me, giving me tips on how to fight and a few hints. The appearance of Regalia and Ronave was obviously so that they could help me. Also, though we still had the usual crazy magic shows, she gave me the metaphor of the Brawn Tube Trial as well as tips on how to fight back. I finally understood how to fight, and at the end of the fourth game, Beto managed to have the all out showdown with me she had probably wanted most of all. Then, Beto acknowledged that my abilities had become full fledged and entrusted me with her heart. Entrusted me with explaining this tale, didn't she? In that case, it really was dumb of me to, boy uh, to boycott most of the fifth game, just because I was so disgusted with those two witches. It doesn't matter who the game master is. All I need is to search for the truth in Beato's game. On the contrary, I should probably thank those two witches just a little for continuing the game in Beato's place now that she's gone and left everything to me. Of course, I doubt those evil witches were trying to do anything of the sort. Culprit, crime, motive. The answers, the hints to those three ultimate riddles must be scattered throughout the tale shown so far. It's probably a very faint light. Like trying to find beads that have fallen onto a sandy beach. They're definitely there. However, they're so faint that unless I believe strongly, there's no way I'll be able to find them. Kinke. Tsushin de Moshi Anger. Nanda. Monogatari. Sakanobori Tamai. Are we going to go back through all the games right now? Ima no Nanji Niwa. Shinjitsu no Kayoaki Hikari o Minogasa no Menu. With all the knowledge he has, right? He can go back, hopefully, and find some clues he would have missed before. It's nice to have it be hopeful again. That hopeful music. It's something that had been repeated over and over throughout the tale. Persistently so. Without love, it cannot be seen, right? Yep. Slowly, the tea room dissolved into darkness. Then, as though I was slowly sinking to a pitch black sea, I passed through the cracks of the long journey I'd taken with Beato and kept on falling and falling. It was a bizarre experience. 
like crossing over the boundary of sleep while still conscious. It's gonna be like going through all the fragments at the end of Higurashi. Maybe? Hopefully? The several tales. Yes! I. The, yes, the several tales that had come before became faint bubbles. No, perhaps small shining fragments that were scattered like stars in a pitch black sky. I kept sinking on and on into that sea. The tales up until now, one after another, after another. Regelius guided Dante to Mount Purgatory and led him to Beatrice, the eternal lady who waited at the top. Therefore, the innermost depths lay not at the bottom, but at the peak of Mount Purgatory. The eternal lady had been waiting there for Dante the whole time. And then... I... I knew. Did he just, like, have a revelation right now? Like, has he figured it all out? No way. No way. We still have a couple more chapters to go. Okay, I finally reached the truth. In the depths. No. At the peak of Mount Purgatory. Idiot. Aw. The song's called Promise, like the promise he made to Beatrice, right? You really are an idiot. <laughs> he woke from the sleep of death, and bit by bit, his sense of pain came back to him. He did! He woke up! He woke up! I knew it! I knew he wasn't gonna let death stop him. As Badler hung there, pierced by the longsword, his head still tilted towards the heavens. Life gradually returned to his face, through an expression of suffering. Battler noticed. Oh, the whole time, Beato had been snuggling up against him, sleeping. And when he held her, he found that it was not Beato, but her crumbling remains. And because her form was as fragile as ash, when Badler tried to hold it, just like a sandcastle made on a beach, being washed away by a small wave, it fell apart and lost its form. At Badler's feet lay nothing but the ragged remains, a remnants of Beto's dress, and a pile of ash. No, on top of that pile of ash, he could see something sparkling gold. It was the husk of a single gold butterfly, which had been torn to bits. And so Badler knew. I did reach the truth, but I wasn't able to do it, while Beato still remained in this world. Beato. お前。本当に馬鹿だろ。俺はようやくこの それを待てずに
お前はもう待ってなくて手遅れになっちまったってババカ野郎どうしてお前が先にくじけちまうんだよ It's my fault. I forced her to endure this torture. In fact, I'm amazed she endured for so long. She kept on appealing to me over and over and over again. And because I was so incompetent, I couldn't even begin to understand the truth. <laughs> His scream of pain filled the cathedral of sorrow. The sad witch who wasn't able to let Badler know of the truth. The sad man who wasn't able to understand the witch's truth. Badler howled in anger and sadness for both of them. The clock hung in the cathedral showed that it was midnight on October 5th, 1986. Time was up for everything. If you're going to create a riddle as hard as this and be so proud of it, don't go and set a goddamn time limit on it. Yeah. What's up? It's the only time I've been in the past. You're the only one. You prayed for and bet on the power of a miracle, one so unlikely that it was totally impossible, less likely than finding a bead you dropped on a sandy beach. And because you did, I have now arrived at that miracle. But your time didn't last long enough. If I had reached this point even a little sooner, if I could have seen the truth, Even if it had been right before time was up, I might have been able to save you. But now, I've been run through pathetically, and I can't even hold what remains of you. I struggled, attempting to pull the long sword out, or at least touch her remains by stretching out my arms, but neither worked. <laughs> At that time, I noticed a golden glint on the palm of my hand. Aw, it was a single wing from a gold butterfly. That small fragment of gold was the only piece of Beato that I was permitted to touch. I cried with all my strength, gripped that fragment, and pressed it against my head, apologizing. Why couldn't I reach the truth earlier? Then I pressed it to my chest, promising that even though things had come to this, I would never again lose the truth. When I pressed my hand against my chest, the sword piercing my chest cut my wrist, and blood dribbled out. That blood spread through my fist, and it must have soaked that gold fragment with my red blood. It must have been the only way of telling her that I'd found the truth she wanted to tell me. I clutched the wing of the gold butterfly with my freshly bleeding hand, and pressed it against the red sword that impaled me. In this moment, Ushurmir Badler knew and understood. He had arrived at the entirety of this tale. At that moment, it seemed as though a faint golden light leaked out of the gaps in his clenched fist. No, oh, Erica, the two witches had their backs turned, and Erica was laughing at Badler's corpse. <laughs> Take that long sword and ram it through Erica. Oh, wipe that smug smile off her face. <laughs> Justice! The song is called Justice All in Caps, that's right. Badler, pull that sword out. Just then, Badler's chest. No, the red long sword impaling Badler. Began to shine gold from deep within his chest. Oh, yeah. That bright golden light began to change the red sword's color. Is he gonna have golden truth?
One step above Red Truth. Turning it gold. Golden what Witch, Golden the... Truth. Go. Ba ga... wa... Nani? <sighs> well, Delinor, you said you uh, you wanted him to go all out. <clears throat> Badler coughed up blood and groaned. His consciousness came back. His will to live, his will to fight, came back. The red longsword impaling battler could no longer be described as such. By now, it had become a golden longsword. Then, slowly, slowly, it pulled itself out of battler's chest. Oh my god! Is he gonna be like, yeah, you might have blue truth and red truth. I got golden truth. And it, it's like, it beats everything. I have love, bitches! Sword of love, let's go. After it had finally pulled itself out of Battler completely, it flipped through the air and struck and stuck upright into the ground in front of Battler's eyes, as though it knew who its master was. Oh my god! I, it is! It is too, he finally has a weapon that he can use. He might not be a witch, but he's got something he can fight against. Battler, crawling on the ground and moaning, grabbed the golden longsword, and though it looked painful, he slowly rose to his feet once again. Lambda stared wide-eyed at the bright golden glow in awe. Noticing Badler's resurrection wasn't part of a script Lambda had thought of, Burn also frowned slightly. Oh my god, is Beller just going to cut through everybody with that sword? The Chiester sisters hesitated, unable to carry out Berntistel's orders. ああ、待たせたな。エリカ、ベルンカステル。今度は俺の真実の番だぜ。最新請求を受理するわ。魔女集会の幻想法廷の平和が再開される。Oh Yes! God, we're getting another trial. This is amazing. Alright, so this is why. This is why apparently this is a super long post-game stuff, is we're having a full-ass new trial. I am hyped. No, it only works if you're Phoenix Wright or Badler. <laughs><笑> イギ。もう Endless Sorcerer. Cool name. Yeah, you're not so special, Erica. <laughs> the rank of a witch, which she had so desired, which she desired for so long, had been granted to Battler so quickly. And on top of that, this wasn't anything temporary. This was an official, proper authorization by Lambda Delta. Erica couldn't accept it, and her face turned bright red. <laughs> I 
後の最後まで楽しませてくれるわあの子のゲームはいいわ付き合ってあげるエリカ受けて立ちなさいあなたが私と築き上げた赤き真実は完璧よ夏日が犯人であるとする真実の構築は完璧だわ絶対にバトラには崩せないむ無論です若あるじ何の心配もありませんそれよりシエスタ姉妹我が主は射殺を命じていますよいつになったら命令は実行されるんですか It's like Erica might be a little bit scared be like、oh, kill Badler before he you know has some sort of truth that I can't override エラーコード39両,両手小銃には解除コードが必要です、うん、だからあいつはやると言ったに領主誰がこのかけらの支配者は誰私です領主まさかバトラがはい後ろ宮バトラはあおしゃれ。Well, 正当な領主と認定されているであります。Isn't that convenient? ええ、そうよ。まだわからないの。あの黄金の輝きの意味が。バトラはね、至ったのよ。すべての真実の最新王にね。Exactly. Right, golden truth. That overrides all truth. だからバトラは、今やこの世界の物語のゲームのすべてを理解している。それはつまり、ゲームの支配者の地位を得たということよ。<笑>それを信じたくないでしょうベルーええー、信じたくもないいいわバトラが本当にすべてを理解したのか試してあげるわ They're not just gonna have him like give out all the answers right here like Are the next couple of chapters just going to be going through painstaking detail of like the, the truth, the actual truth? Erika! She's sending her out like a Pokemon. Erika, I choose you. Go! Okay, I feel a little bad. A little bad for Erika. She finally got everything she wanted. For all of five minutes, and it's just been taken away from her. バトラー。バトラさんの猛言に付き合ってあげてくださいあらいつ、they're gonna have their maybe final showdown here slowly、デレノーは stepped forwards in her hand was the red long sword of the decalogue she also had a blue short sword in Badler's hand was the golden long sword the two rivals once again no, for the first time They truly confronted each other. Batra, 
待っていました待たせたないいいえあなたの帰りは私の予想より早かったです殺しなさいドラノールへのオックスデラノールズフォーム、ディスピードインインスタント、as though her slow dignified movements from before were only a lie The trial drawn, or the trail drawn by the long sword of red truth burnt itself into the retinas of those who saw it. Before anyone had enough time to follow that trail, it was already approaching Badler's chest. Erika Kyono Sweeting, you read Daigo no game, a Kaiket Shimasta. Kono Sweeting, you're a Shingit book, two guys, a Shingit, a son, Zai Shimasen. Oh, it's so nice to see him actually be able to strike back. In this closed off world, it's possible for differing truths to exist at the same time. Furthermore, as long as multiple truths exist, it's possible to claim that any of the truths are the single truth. Oh my gosh, I'm such an idiot! I just noticed, so. Like before, with the, you know, with the question arcs, the quote unquote question arcs,、um, the outline, the Umineko logo at the bottom there was Beatrice, and now it's Badler as the sorcerer. What? I love that. In other words, even if I can't overturn Erica's reasoning by questioning its credibility and conquering it, I can defeat it. Beatrice's theory is perfect. It can't be overturned easily. But, eh. ベルンの推理と互角の推理を提示できたなら戦いは氷結となるすなわちいずれかの真実は打ち破られて否定されることがありえる笑わせる脚本だわ悪魔の脚本はやはりこうでなくっちゃでは問いましょう夏日以外の誰が犯人という仮説ですか Badler's golden longsword drew both, both red and blue trails at will. I'm curious about that. Alright, we're, we're bringing this guy up. Whoever this person is, who has to be one of the original people, because there's a whole thing about、uh, the Nox thing says it cannot be a person that was not introduced at the beginning of the story or something like that. That would almost be a third rate mystery answer, as Erica says, if it was Badler was secretly the murderer the whole time. <laughs> Oh. oh, this is coming back. Hmm. Okay, okay. And he's not saying that this is the actual truth. He's just presenting an alternative that you, so you can't say without a doubt that it's not Sui. Adler proposed he might be the baby from 19 years ago and announced he would reconstruct the crimes with himself as the culprit. I mean, he is 19, right? So that lines up. As Delinor cautiously held her sword at the ready, she gauged the distance between them. If we're talking about that, like if the baby has to be 19 years old now,、uh, right? Like he's the only one who's 19, I believe. I think Shannon's 18. 
and Canon is either Shannon's age or maybe a little bit younger. I don't actually know what Canon's age is. So, I guess if we're going by that, Badler would be the most likely person. Now that Badler had inherited the position of this world's territory lord, and even attained the rank of Endless Sorcerer, his movements surpassed human understanding. By now, the physical distance between them probably counted for nothing, because their extremely agile battle was surpassing the point where the concept of distance made any difference. ま、その矛盾があなたの通い真実を刈り取るこの私探偵にして真実の魔女。Oh, ah, sorry. It's just like subconsciously, I just want to cut Erica off. Like Erica, shut up. <laughs> this time, Erica stepped forward. No, oh, in her hand, there appeared to be a scythe, like one a grim reaper might hold. That's right. She's a witch, so she can do this too. A ruthless scythe for reaping everything that threatened her theory. <笑>時刻が24時から24時間の1時間の間と特定はされていない。よくて。犯行は24時から午前1時までの間でなくとも可能だ。いとこ部屋の殺人に限定します。午前 Okay. I love seeing Badler so confident now. Badler used a blue flash to deflect both the red truths that Erica and Eleanor had flung at him. It's like he's elevated to another level now. Erica's eyes went wide. After all, what he had said was completely absurd. At that time, they still hadn't been killed? Even though corpses were lying there with their necks sliced open? <laughs> あの時点で死んでいた常時たちを魔法概念で蘇らせたつもり。なるほど。あの時点で死んでたと信じるお前にとっちゃ死者が蘇らされるみたいに見えるだろうな。ならこれはお前にとって魔法になるだろうぜ
<laughs> Take that dead people. Wow, she's... Oh my gosh, she's so petty. Oh, Rotave! What? Yeah, that means Gap's gonna come back. Regilia's coming back too. The fierce shower of red was blocked by a magical barrier set up by Ronave, who suddenly appeared right in front of Battler. Now that Beato was gone, the demons shouldn't have been able to manifest themselves in the real world. Does that mean somehow Beato might come back too? Maybe? I have hope. However, he existed here and calmly dealt with Erika's attack. まあいいです。こう都合です。探って魔が省けました。この場で捕らえてあんたも存在否定してあげます。譲るぜ。一つの傲慢なる真実だ。全てを支配などできないことを教えてやれ。Yes, you are majesty. では、少しお相手しましょうか。どうぞ、お嬢さん。この法廷が改定した時、ラムダデルタ教は宣言しておりますよ。I'm a little, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little confused about that proclamation. それを探偵殿はご覧になられましたかな。確かに全ての死体は誰であっても検視を誤ることはないとなっておりますが、死体でないものを死体と言っていけないと言われておりませんもので。オッケー、オッケー。エリカスワンハーサイトレクレスリー
Nia. Hmm. Regalia could already be seen in midair inside the cathedral. This is so epic. As Erica fell from the heavens, Regalia was right below her and thrust upwards with her divine spear glowing blue. Oh, right, because she was saying that Kinzo, right, 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 so like Erica, she had an idea that Kinzo was already dead, but she played it as if like, oh, Natsui and Kinzo were working together to move the bodies, but if Kinzo's dead, then that can't happen. Oh, this is delicious. <laughs> Fergelia's blue divine spear skewered and pinned Erica in midair. Erica struggled, filled with hatred, but she couldn't get out of it easily. Then, all around her, Several small, fast things clanged off the walls and surrounded her. Alright, everybody's coming back. <laughs> yeah, I'm almost feeling a little bit bad for Erica at this point. She's so outnumbered. Seven people manifested at once. Means yeah, they were killed afterwards. Genji <laughs> Even with Kinzo's existence denied, Erika was probably capable of escaping this pin by making only a small revision to her theory. However, to her, having to revise a theory she had already created was extremely humiliating. あなたの of course, even Erika had doubted Kinzo's existence from the beginning. However, in the trial that had taken place before, no one except Burncastel, as well as Lambda Delta, who was going along with her, had been capable of denying Kinzo's existence. And because of the willful silence of those two, she had been free to shape the truth about Kinzo in any way she desired. She never expected that Badler, who had become a witch, a sorcerer, capable of using red without proof. However, she had her own inquisitor who could also use red without proof to counter. <laughs> Nox, die, Nijo, 
探偵方法に超自然能力の使用を禁ず金蔵の死を赤き真実で示すならばそれを構築する人間の真実証拠の提示を求めます許せクソじじい声ゆけバトラー我がしかもあんねえ証拠提示後宮金蔵と識別可能な遺体を提示するその遺体が後宮金蔵であると証明することはできますかどれほど金蔵に酷似した遺体であろうとも当人であることを証明できない限り第三者の身代わり死体であるとの主張が可能ですそれが金蔵の遺体であることを人間の真実で示せますか本件のみ赤き真実のみでの反論を無効とします真実での反応を無効そんな思考もあるのね。They're really, uh, they're desperate at this point. 確かに、第三者の死体が存在しないことは、すでに赤で語られている。しかし、それを赤で語ることを禁じられたら。<笑>バトラのやつ、お手上げじゃない<笑> Can we use that against them? They can't just use the red truth and say that that's absolute truth. They have to prove their side, too. So, the man, Kono to the Sarata of Kenji Madeva. Kono Staiga G. Samano Monoda to Shimesu, Kakan Tekina Ho Ho and I. Sore Kosova Kono Itaiga Kaida Mastai, the Aru Kano Se no Shisa des. Kono Mimoto Hume Itaiga Kinzo no Shio Shomesu no Mononi Manariemas. It's funny, this is the kind of reasoning that Balor would be using before,、uh, when he was just using like body doubles and stuff. When he was kind of like trying to cling on to something. Except that's not in red. <laughs> Delanor had sealed off the red truth as a means of proving that Kinzo's corpse had been shown. Even with the power of witches, Badler couldn't argue back. But how about with gold? Yeah. Ah! Gold and truth. I called it. I called it. <laughs> Then, when Delanor met with Badler's golden flash, she was unable to fully block it with either her red longsword or her blue short sword, and she was blown backwards into the air. It was a direct hit without any miscalculation. Though she had always seemed as firm as a, a small giant before now, she was finally blasted away and slammed against the wall as though she was the slender girl she appeared to be. Delanor! What are you doing? 見事な黄金の真実有効ですお黄金の真実 The golden longsword, which had been drawing red and blue trails before now, finally drew a trail which retained its divine golden color. The truth it showed was neither red nor blue, it was gold truth. な何それラムダこんなのはルールにあるの<笑>ええ、黄金の真実、有効よ。黄金の真実は、この世界の領主。いえ、ゲームマスターにしか使えないな、なんですって黄金の真実、赤き真実とは異なる方法によって紡がれる、神なる真実。その力は赤き真実と同等です。時に劣るでしょう。しかし、時に勝るその輝きこそが、バトラ君が本当にベアトを理解した証。示したぜ、この死体がじい様であることを。
はい黄金の真実受理しましたエリカ教の推理は修正に応じぬ限り破綻しますそそんなエリカ cried out in pain it wasn't the pain of her body being impaled It was the pain of her own theory being defiled. Naruhoda, Jojit's trick, no Yoseat's mekato motara. Korewa it's no manica. Tonda get sexual, eh? Motora, so they show Kataru a yabo is a giro, eh? Antano. 遺体消失の真実もはやこれ以上語らずとも完全に理解させてもらったわなるほどねあんたの考えてるそれはこれまでの法廷の全ての赤に矛盾しない19年前の男の復讐を軸にしたあんたの真実その全て理解し受理したわあんたの真実の成立を宣言するできる気でいるのオリエリカ、the one who is supposedly so intelligent couldn't understand。She couldn't understand that Badler had already found the real truth。以上により、爺様の不在は証明され、夏日おばさん。And I love that Badler is also fighting for Natsui's honor. Be like, I'm. We're taking that off the table. That's not even a thing that happened, so shut up. Yeah, Badler. Oh, what a good guy. Oh. Delinor, who must have risen to her knees at some point, slowly stood up. The flash from the golden longsword was still carved deep into her chest. Though pain didn't show in her expression, her awkward movements clearly showed how serious the damage she had taken was. Even though she herself knew that this spelled the total end of the match, Delinor didn't abandon her duty. Sarado, you are the only one who is 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 the only Ah, he's using knocks against her. <laughs> それがない限りあなたには主観を偽る権利はありませんこれは今回のゲームで非分の謎の仕掛けを解いた時爺様を目撃しているすでに赤で示されている通りオッケー爺様は存在しないその目撃は不可能だ Nice, Badler, nice. 
レアトが示した赤き真実すべての人物は後ろ宮金蔵を見間違わない It's the red truth Beto used to counter my blue truth claim that someone disguised themselves as grandfather and thereby made it seem as though he'd appeared. In other words, on this island, anything which might lead someone to visually mistake something for grandfather, including someone else pretending to be grandfather, cannot ever work. The scheme Aunt Natsui once put together to make it seem as though grandfather were alive only involved her saying things like, he was here just a second ago, or he's in his study alone now. Cleverly exploiting the relative's blind spots to pretend he was there. She never tried to make anyone mistake something they saw for Grandfather himself, so there are no contradictions. If she had tried to dress one of the servants in Grandfather's robe, it would probably have been seen through in an instant. It has been guaranteed that none of the characters in this tale would mistake something for Grandfather by sight. If someone still claims to have seen Grandfather, it becomes a falsehood. Everyone is permitted the right to falsify their observations, but there is one person who does not have that right, and that person is the detective. Who ni nabik sheet o mimachigai, so deo nan de atta to gonin ste katarnomo. Nok, shikashi! Ji sama da to gonin sru koto dakeba! Akaki shinjits ni oite, hon game deva yurusare te inai! 金蔵を見たと主張された時点で誤認識ではなく意図的すなわち観測の客観性が否定されていることの証しというわけですか In this case, unintentional misrecognition is not permitted by the rules of this game. However, it is possible to intentionally lie about seeing something you never saw. This feels like this is going to be a big point in this game. Feels like a lot of people. In this story, are lying about stuff that they claim that they saw. And that is an action not permitted to a detective burdened with the responsibility of an impartial perspective. So he's saying, therefore, he can't be the detective because he lied. Battler's golden long sword drew a massive blue arc as though splitting the heavens. The noise which rang out across the cathedral was the sound of Delanor's longsword clattering to the floor. Simply letting go of that was the same as resigning to the proud Delanor. Yeah, this feels like victory music at the end of a Phoenix Wright game. <laughs> Though the blue trail Badler had drawn was aiming right for the top of Delanor's head, it stopped a hair's breadth away. If it hadn't, Delanor would probably have been annihilated without leaving a single scrap of flesh behind. Resign. This. Anata's <laughs> I like that they respect each other. Even if they're fighting each other, they like they're not doing this out of maliciousness. It's it's like honorable. <laughs> Delinar sat on the floor and completely abandoned her will to fight. <laughs> なさてない。みっともない。まるけな嘘の殺人人形。あんたは自分の父の名誉に泥を塗ったわ。恥知らず。それでもミステリーのくさみ。魔法に屈するの。そんなのミステリーの歴史が許さない。お前こそ何もミ
俺は二度とそれを語らせないバーバートラーお前に相反する真実を宣言する夏日おばさんは19年前の男すなわち俺によって内戦電話で脅迫されていたんだその目的は夏日おばさんを殺人犯に仕立て上げることこれは初めから夏日おばさんに濡れ衣を着せるための復讐劇だち違います夏日が仕組んだ後ろ宮邸の復讐劇です Man, that would be wild if Badler actually was this like adopted child brought from the orphanage That's I no I don't believe that like I know the age and everything seems to add up but I like I feel like this is just he's just putting this out there as a potential other thing so you can't say that Erica's truth is like the final truth. Also, that would be very awkward if the person who was behind Natsui like doing all that was also the one defending her. <laughs> A deeply piercing blue spear and the seven red stakes tormented her theory. They won't come out. They won't come out. Shuseto, Erika no Suiri no Ayamari o Mitomeru. So, so, no, Waga Aruji. Watching Erika's face contort with pain as she struggled to escape from the spear, Bernka still declared this with a disgusted expression. For all intents and purposes, it was as if Bernka still had acknowledged Erika's defeat herself. With eyes of shock and despair, Erika looked up at the master who no longer had any confidence in her victory. あ、<笑> As Erica's face twisted in humiliation and tears streamed from her eyes, she withdrew and revised her own theory in accordance with her master's or gee, oh, how much longer is this gonna go on? They're just gonna be going back and forth with different theories. Mumbling quietly, she made various revisions with the blue truth, had them acknowledged by Lambda Delta, and finally had the blue spear smashed and was freed. Okay, here we go. Is this going to be the final, final showdown? We'll see. Though the blue truth did indeed explain how the bodies had disappeared, it was truly shabby reasoning that raked of desperation. <laughs> Erica was taunted by her master, who wore an ugly expression. She thrashed about on the floor, crying bitter tears. The wounded Delanor stepped out before her, as though shielding her, and she, boke to she spoke to Burncastell as well as Badler. Maybe she's like, he's like, at least you were this and, and hear what she has to say, even though you're probably going to strike it down. 
very quickly. <笑>そうです。エリカ教の真実は私が誰にも否定させません。と。ずる。ロークワークアフターエリカカルトハーライクアイユースレスマーダードル。エンエンソルトハーファーダー。その真実を守り致します。どんなに見素晴らしくと
I love it. Now it's like... <laughs> now Battler is almost acting like Beatrice, and Erica is the new Battler. <laughs> oh yeah, he gets to rename the game because he's the new Game Master. その挑戦望むところです。私は古戸エリカ。魔女である以前に探偵。あなたがこのゲームの新たな支配者であることを認め。そして戦線布告します。絶対に絶対に暴いてやる。殺してやる。黄金の魔術師。Instead of yelling, Beatrice at the end, now it's Erica. <laughs> Just watch, Beato. I'll take charge of your game. And in this next game, I'll prove that I completely understand all of your riddles. Noise, alright. Hell yeah! Alright, that was awesome. Okay. Whew. Whew. Determine, was that better than... than the last chapter's tea party? Oh, I don't know. They're both pretty damn good. Like, the last one ended, like, that moment with... Badler and Beato, like, embracing. It was like more heartwarming, whereas this, it was heartwarming, the whole thing about like love and he finally understood her. But that moment at the end, it was just like, fuck yeah, like Battler elevating himself up to Game Master. Dude got promoted. Went from being so incompetent to this, you know? <laughs> that was great. All right, well, before we officially end this chapter, let's check out. We've got some new character information and tips here. So I guess Balor's going to be on the witch side now, isn't he? Uh, there he is! The man des uh, designated by Beato as her opponent during the first four games. Disgusted at how Lambda Delta took over as Game Master for the fifth game, he's not taking part in it as a player. And we also have Erica is now on the Witch's side as well. Berngestel's double and servant also a piece who has manifested in the human world. Because she is human, she cannot use magic and the like. However, because she is in contact with Berngestel in a higher world and can appeal to her to use higher world miracles and authority on her behalf, it would probably be no exaggeration to call Ferdo Erica a human capable of wielding the power of a witch. Through Burncastel, she has been given the detective's authority while on the game board. Therefore, even though she is an outsider to the Ushermia family, she possesses the right to demand full attention from everyone when speaking, the right to advance proceedings, and the right to investigate the crime scene before the police arrive, as well as many other special abilities. She gets pleasure from the process of solving riddles, but her greatest joy comes from using that victory to sneer at others. Okay, so I don't know if this is different information here, where the whole thing about uh, claims the entire incident on Rokuji was caused by the witch illusion. In the fifth game, she clashes with Burncastel, who denies this. Because she is no more than a piece and the higher plane version of her. Has withdrawn from being the game master, she is not in a position to know the truth behind the fifth game. This means she is in a different position than the other ones that she or than the one she held in previous games. Oh wow, so you can actually execute her on this one. Damn, right? Because before she would be like as if you can kill a witch, and now she's just like broken, broken doll. The Beatrice on the highest plane and the one who created this world entrusted everything to Badler during the fourth game and gave up the position of Game Master. She has lost not only the will to fight, but even the will to express herself, and is now little more than a doll. In the world of the game board, those who do not fight have no meaning. Her existence is gradually losing its value and will probably break down and disappear before long. Okay, so apparently no new tips for some reason, despite the fact it did say that. Alright guys, well that will do it for this chapter. So now with Battler as the new Game Master, we move on to uh, chapter 6 soon, or episode 6. And I am so excited about with him apparently knowing the truth. How is that going to affect this game? And then with Eric and Delanor coming back as well. Should be interesting for sure.
So as always, I will be doing my, my theory video on chapter 5. So I'm just going to say tentatively that uh, it's not going to come out next Friday, but the Friday after that. And maybe I will do, I don't know, an extra live stream next week or an extra little video just so uh, there's more uh, content. Uh, but hopefully you guys will be patient with me as I get that video put together. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope this was worth the wait. And uh, stay tuned to wait for that theory video when that comes out. Until next time. Bye, guys. Special shoutouts to my top tier patrons Nana, Kaori Mikoto, Revealing Storm, Tequila Mockingbird, Jared Fan, Saya, Asborn Kennedy, Harry Gaziff, Puncake G, Icognito, and Matt Goldsmith.